Wakefield, Nixon combined. Here's Jonathan Docking. Jonathan Docking's under the post, and what a top try from that young man. Late down the touch line, inside pass for Lamb, and away it goes to Hasler, and on it goes to Jonathan Docking. Docking, can he get there? Yes, he can. There goes Eddie Hauser around Steve Morris, inside pass for Docking. He's down, he'll get up again, the little rubber ball. He's over. Well, we've been doing the fold-out chairs for a lot of years, and the most respect we get from the fans is when we speak to the one-club men. Today, a Cronulla Sharks great. Jonathan Docking, welcome to the program. Thanks, Fozzie. 161 games. Someone who was... Well, I'll ask you, were you born to play for Cronulla? Yeah, my dad was involved with the club from the start. He was on the committee. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember going to Sutherland Oval. They started there in 67. Yep. Wow. I was born in 64, so I remember as a three-year-old walking on the uh, wooden floor and you'd drop a corner to go through onto the ground, so <laughs> that, that was fun? Sutherland Oval. So they're probably some of my first memories of, uh, of, um, of life, that you know, it was at Sutherland Oval. That is amazing. What a, what a story. What a first attachment to the club you would play 161 games for. But there is one thing. People, Jonathan Docking, Blake in the headgear, little. In, in football terms, small, was there a chance that rugby league wasn't going to be your game because of size? No, well, we're at Shark Park here and I grew up just up the road, you know, across uh, Willowa Golf Course, up the road a bit further from there. Played all my junior football, uh, played all the junior rep teams for Cronulla. Um, Harold Matthews at the time was 14s and I actually played halfback. Yeah. And as we right. got on to beyond there, then we had Barry Russell, in the SG ball and the and the flag and that and John O'Connor and guys like that. So yeah, wow. other local guys. Um, so in those days, you just play wherever you were put. I've got a little stat for you from your career that maybe you're not even aware. You make your debut and play your last game against the same club. Correct, it's Canterbury. And you score a try in both your first and last games, as it turns out. Were you aware of that? Well, not really, but <laughs> I do remember... I do remember here, I think I yeah. came on as a replacement yeah. and... Um, I think I might have been on the wing at the time. 1984. Yep, and um, I do remember the last one. Um, it might have been a kick through or dived on or something like that, but uh, yeah. I can't say I remember. I think I had 57 tries, but I don't remember too many. OK, now the, the time in between, and, and in between, uh, there is one particular season that Cronulla absolutely on fire, 1988, minor premiers. Is that a little bit of regret? You don't even make the grand final. You're minor premiers, but you don't even make the big one. Yeah, in those days, top five, you know, we finished first, so that meant you get two bites at the yeah. cherry. Um, I think it probably a bit of inexperience in our forwards in the first one, Canterbury flogged us, mm. and uh, then we had a tight game against Balmain. But yeah. um, you grow up following the team, mm. that was our chance, Cronulla never won a comp. Yep. I was there when we won it, you know, in 16, and um, for us to do that, I mean, that would have been, as a kid growing up yeah. in the area, that would have been the ultimate. Could but, have been um, different, 1988. Oh, we all regret it. Premier. You know, you have two chances. Um, Barry Russell um, had a great speech when Cronulla played Canberra before the semi-final in 2016. Mm. And he spoke to the players and um, they kindly invited some old players to go mm. and sit amongst the, the current, you know, the players yeah, at the sure. time. We had lunch with them before they went to Canberra. And Barry made a great speech mentioning our opportunity we let go. Yeah. And if you recall that game, we, we should have got That's right. flogged by Canberra. Yeah. Um, Gow didn't go. Um, we had injuries. Um, First minutes, Wade Graham. I mean, there Michael off. Ennis in front of the crowd there. Who will ever forget that? Well, that was wonderful. <laughs> I, I thought it was great. I do want to talk about the representative career, obviously, but I, I think we need to put the jigsaw puzzle piece at the end of the career, how at 27, um, and, and you look at your record, Jonathan, you played a lot of matches, you scored a consistent number of tries each season. So how does the career come to an end in 1991? Oh, I think it's like happens at a lot of clubs. and Everyone goes through the stages where, um, you know, you're going well. We had chances in 88, 89, and we sort of blew those opportunities. Mm. Um, clubs obviously looking to go in a different way. There were a few of us who were deemed troublemakers back then. Right. Barry Russell, myself, right. Al Wilson, uh, a couple right. others. Um, so we probably, um, you know, we were seen as not... Uh, required the following year at Cronulla, and we actually got sort of black band to a point Ooh. elsewhere. All right, now we get to, this is like the main course of the interview, state of origin. What a unique position. That you make your state of origin debut Los Angeles, California. Like, how does that, 
You must pinch yourself. How do you even explain that to people? Oh, well, I thank Gary Jack for being injured at the time, which was nice. Um, we spent probably a week over there. You know, we did Disneyland, we went to Universal Studios, Venice Beach, and, you know, all the things that, as a kid, you want to see in America, yeah. so we got to do. Um, went to some of the universities to see the grid on, to see how they prepared, you know, the size of the guys there. You know, I mean, they were massive, obviously. Um, oh, no, it was just a, a really, you know, a great opportunity. Um, we almost had stayed longer than what we planned. Um, the passports got pushed, pushed in one of the guys' rooms in the safe. He lost the key. And so I think Sterlow and a couple of those guys right. were ready, already looking to go to Vegas. They were, they were ready right. to stay another right. couple of days, but they ended up getting into the safe. That actual night, I remember uh, seeing a report once, and I think Mike Gibson, Channel 9, was going around, and some American who had like a raccoon on his head said, that little guy in the blue bucket, you know, because you had the headgear. They really had great admiration. Who's that little guy with a blue bucket on his head? Sorry for the accent, folks. Yeah. <laughs> you won them over. They really couldn't believe that you are playing a, a physical contact sport at your size compared to what they're used to with the NFL. Yeah, sure. I mean, it was, a, it was like a party atmosphere over there. Yeah. Um, I think they brought over uh, Tui's and 4X beer, who were the sponsors. So mm. the Americans used to drinking to our standards mid-strength. Yes. They were drinking super, so they were Ooh. quite... Um, wow. Happy yeah. would be the word, and <laughs> it was a great atmosphere. Yeah, um, you know, there, was, there was only a stand on one side of the yeah. ground, and the other side just had nothing. I will ask you about one that's a little bit out, and it's not to do with your career, but that moment, that night on the run on, Sturlow and the banner. Did you have a good view of Sturlow going through the banner? I was a bit behind it. He got stuck, but um, <laughs> I think he ended up running underneath it. Yes, he was trapped. He was trapped like a yeah. spider in a web. Like he, he just. Yeah, yeah well, I don't know. Did he get, no one went to his aid. I noticed. Oh, no, I, I can't really remember, but, um, I mean, they use those sort of thing, things more now. I know in the AFL they use it a lot, and probably yeah. in, the, in America right. they probably yeah. use that too, but yeah. it wasn't really a rugby yeah. league thing. No. Now, there is another Origin game, so it's not just a one-off replacing an injured Gary Jack. You get to play one more Origin. What was the comparison like, playing Origin far afield to actually playing in Australia? Yeah, that one, I think it was... Um, we lost... I don't know, well, about 16 maybe or something like that, but I think it was a record number of players got dropped for game two, mm. you know, and I was one of those, but um, it was also, I think, the first game at the SFS, the yep. newly, I think it was 1980. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, obviously disappointing. I think, I don't know, it is a different game, as people say. I think when I first got there, it was a little bit like, you know, mm. the game was sort of underway before you really get yeah. snap into it. So... Um, I don't know, we're pre preparation that time. I've seen Petey, who was a coach, and we've mm. talked about that. Um, in those days, you know, everyone got together before the game over a few beers and all the rest of it. Um, it yeah, I, I don't know. I, so personally, I just sort of wasn't switched on at the time. I remember that. Okay. And, you know, and another thing you sort of regret. You, That's know, you a like to have your time again. Um, every Cronulla fan in particular, I think you had respect of all rugby league fans at the time, but every Cronulla fan, I'm sure if I if I surveyed them one by one, they would all say they loved you. To feel that respect, to feel that admiration from the fans, is that perhaps your greatest achievement, that you were so taken to heart by the fans at this one club? I think it was more to do with the fact that when we came through, there was they, the club signed about 10 of us onto a $2,000 contract at the time. Wow. And the, re the rest of the players yeah. that had took a pay cut, they got half pay. So you can imagine everyone turns up and you're on half pay. So they signed up I think it was 10 or 12 juniors. So you yeah. had like Barry Russell, Mick Porter, BT, Sparkles, um, oh, Stewie Raper. Um, so many, great. Yeah, yeah, we had a, I'm probably missing some there, uh, obviously, am, but, um, and we all came through junior reps mm. and we played against each other over the years. So it was, I think that they got behind us because we're all locals. Yeah. I reckon there's Sharks fans wanting me to ask, there is one last question. Have you still got the headgear? You still have done the headgear? Like, Jonathan Docking without the headgear, who knows Jonathan Docking? We, the, the headgear was synonymous with you. I wore it for a few years and I think it became a bit of a target on my head. I think it was like an X and I think I had more hits to the head when I wore it than I didn't. <laughs> and I didn't wear it the last couple of years, but yeah, I have still got a couple at home. I did give some away. Um, I was only looking for some gear for a, a friend, Ash, who has got a big collection of Sharks gear and I got him a jumper, an Aussie duck jumper a few years ago and I went and dug out all the uh. old stuff in bags and there are still a couple running around. Or floating around somewhere. So I know the end of Cronulla was unhappy for you or unsavoury, but 
you still love rugby league. I mean, you must be very grateful for, for having represented this great club. Yeah, and I also was on the board a couple of times, you know, had a couple of runs there. I was there when Asada hit, so that wasn't so much fun. So um, that's the club, though. It's been it's been a roller coaster ride. Mm. Um, the good thing now is I think we're at a pretty good, you know, space now. Some great people running the club. And the players coming through are certainly, mm. it's very, the area's sort of got right behind the club again. I think after 2016, it was hard for the club because a lot of people around here thought, we've won a comp, that's it. Yeah. And so for the year or two following, I think the club found it hard that everyone, had, not everyone, but a lot of people sort of said, tech, job done. <laughs> but it's now with the new recruits yeah. we've got, like Nico and, and Dale and, and, and the younger forwards and that coming through, I think mm. there is a big enthusiasm again. So it's building again. The, the excitement and the interest, I think, is ramping back up and coming back home too. Well, I hope you realise how much you were valued by the fans and not just Cronulla fans. Jonathan, be proud of what you achieved. Uh, as a one club man. Well done. Thanks, Vossie. Cheers. Jonathan Dockey. This has been a Fox Sports production.